Hey guys, so I wanted to look at a couple of different um, aqua brushes today. I actually ordered these to take on a vacation that we had recently, but they didn't arrive on time, so I didn't get to try them out before then. But um, I've been really looking into doing more urban sketching and being able to just take an aqua brush with me or a couple of different uh, types of aqua brushes with me instead of having to take a lot of different brushes and um, water bottles and things like that sounded like a really cool idea. So we have a couple of different brands here. Uh, the first one I bought was this Pentel one which got really good reviews. Um, I think it runs about 15 or $16 for the set of four. You can actually get you know them separately and I think they're about six dollars each or you can get a set of three. Um, I just went with the set of four just because I didn't really know what brush size I wanted to be able to use and then I bought this other little pack um, from Amazon I think it's Uku which is such a cute name um, <laughs> and I got this and this has a bunch in it one two three four five six seven different brushes and it looks like a different brush type too so there's one here that kind of looks like the Pentel and then these other ones look a little different so I was just interested to see how these two compare um, and whether they leak or whether the brush tips are different or anything like that just to um, see you know if the more affordable version is just as good as this guy or if this really makes a difference buying a more expensive version okay so let's open up the Pentel ones first okay so right off the bat what I see is that the pens are all the same size so they're all the same height so that's convenient and it looks like they have different colored lids which actually might be great for telling the size of the uh, nib on here because you can't really see it through the through the plastic there um, these guys here both have the same color uh, top so that's not super helpful <laughs> but um, I think what they were trying to go with here is to help you with uh, maybe these three and this is the flat brush so maybe that's kind of like an add-on um, yeah so they all have the same construction they have a uh, reservoir here that screws off and unlike my Sakura one this actually goes in the direction that we th you would think spinning the body left to take it off anyway little thing um, so these go in here let's see if they post on the back oh they post really nicely on the back so that's great for travel so you don't lose the lid so that's a really nice selling point um, let's take a look at the, let's just post these. Let's take a look at all the different nibs. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it comes with a small, a medium, and a large, and then a kind of a square, a flat brush here. Not very, not very wide, but still um, a flat brush there. So let's see the comparison on these guys here. So yeah, these are very, very different sizes, which is nice. Um, I thought they might be pretty close in size here, but you really do get quite a big one. Uh, let's grab some brushes and see what they compare to. One second. Okay, so I'm back with some, just some of my generic Amazon uh, watercolor brushes here. So let's see how they compare. So this big one kind of looks like maybe a looks like about the same width of a a 10 but the length is really different so it might act more like maybe the 8 in holding capacity here for the water um yeah so it's kind of like a maybe an 8 i would think that probably is and then this medium one I think is like a six. I mean obviously the brush length is much longer on these um, but I think the amount of bristles for all focus yeah so I think that's probably like maybe comparable to a six so this is the medium medium one sorry if the focus keeps changing here so probably like a medium and then this little one I think is kind of like a four so the small one is sort of the same barrel size as a a four here. Okay let's have a look at the Uku brush sizes just as to compare. So for starters this guy comes in a little pouch which is cute. You can probably reuse that. So I'll just put that up there. Okay so we have a selection of seven here and so this is our one that kind of looks like the Pentel. Let's see what size that actually is. Yep, so the lids post on here really well too. It's a nice, 
it's a nice tight fit you can push that down so that's really good for travel so I'm guessing it kind of it's probably closest to the small brush here so I think they're fairly similar sizes this looks like the bristles are a little maybe a little longer on the uku and uh, what else do we have here we've got two more round brushes here so this one here again the lid goes on well let's see if it's comparable to the medium uh, it's a little a little thinner maybe than the medium again the bristles are a bit longer one that's close oh it's quite a bit smaller actually than the large version on the pentel but this has like a completely different lid with a, a little thing on here to pin onto your shirt or whatever uh, the lid still posts not a great fit but that'll do while you're traveling um, and quite a lot longer actually with the tip posted I mean the tip <laughs> with the lid posted it's um you know that whole length longer so I don't know if that'll be a problem I don't think so it's not very heavy the lid so it should be fine but yeah quite a different design to the pentel there let's have a look at these other guys do we have another oh no so these are all flat so there's four flat ones so this is the I think this is maybe the smallest flat so let's look compared to the pentel it's still a bit smaller than the pentel here and the lid posts as well not a great that's a actually that one's pretty bad that does not really post that just comes straight off so not not great there um Yep, so that's our first flat. This is another flat, which seems almost exactly the same width, but a little longer. So and let's see, we've got two more. Let's just open it. Whoa, so this is a mega one. We'll have a look at that second. So this one is a little bit bigger than the Pentel. Um, seems to contain a lot more bristles. It's a lot thicker. Um, if you look on the profile here it's a little bit thicker there uh, yeah so let's see if this posts oh wow weird so the whole thing just goes in there so that one's great that that is on there forever um, and then this guy here which is huge almost sort of fans out I'm not sure how that's going to act when it's wet if it's supposed to be sort of a brush that fans out yeah. so you can see this is quite a lot of bristles in there and just a really sort of chunky brush there so all right so let's see how easy these guys are to fill yeah so as far as filling up i normally just have this little bottle of water that i have on my desk anyway just so i have pure water whenever i need it um so i find that this guy is really convenient to fill up so let's just well to, to fill up your pens so let's just take one of these off and see yeah so it's just a empty reservoir here with a big hole you can actually just turn on the tap in your bathroom or your kitchen to a really slow flow and fill this up it doesn't tend to bubble up too much and it fills up pretty fast so that's a super easy way to do it too but I normally just squeeze in some here I'll just fill it up a little bit so we can fill them all up so you just squeeze a bunch in and then screw this back on this one doesn't have any travel stops in it so um, that will be interesting to see whether it leaks in your bag or not I've heard the Pentel is pretty safe for that kind of thing so let's just see here yeah so even flinging it around um, we can give it a bit of a squeeze actually let me get a rag just got a paper towel here so if we give this a little squeeze it's gonna fill up the um, reservoir there and sometimes it bubbles out if you squeeze it a bunch it kind of produces a bead here but sometimes you need to just do that it doesn't really ruin the pen but yeah so this is flowing into the brush now and I can feel that it's wet so that's as easy as it is just to fill up a, a water pen so I'm going to go ahead and fill up all these pentel ones and then we'll try one of these guys all right so that's the pentel ones done let's fill this one that looks like a pentel see if that works the same ah so hang on <laughs> yes so this is like my sakura one it actually opens in the opposite direction 
So if it doesn't unscrew, try the other way. There we go. So that one was super easy. Let's look at one of these other guys. I think they're going to be the same, but just in case. Yep, so they op open the opposite way again. And yep, just a reservoir, no stoppers in here or anything. Okay, so while we're filling these brushes up, let's talk a little bit more, I guess, about the pros and cons of water brushes in general. Um, I guess the main con is that they're not the same as a professional watercolor brush. Um, there are synthetic watercolor brushes out there that are amazing, but this nylon material just acts really differently to any of the other watercolor brushes you've probably used. They don't really hold on to like a ton of water, like a say a squirrel mark brush. Um, they are constantly getting fed water from the reservoir, so the holding capacity of the bristles doesn't have to be the same as it is for like a traditional watercolor brush. That being said, without that holding capacity, you can't pick up a huge amount of pigment either, and you can't do big watery washes. However, they are really good for sketching on the go and urban sketches. You can get some quick color down, you don't have to be too precious about it, and they're super portable, you have your own water supply, go to a museum, go to a cafe, go outside, and you just have everything you need right there if you have your little palette of colors. Okay, so let's try these brushes out. So I'm going to go from small to large on both sides. We're going to start with the Pentel. So what I'm doing here is just doing a wash to see how um, consistent the flow is on the water brushes. Um, I didn't actually pick up a ton of ink on this one. You'll see some of the other ones are a little darker, but the wash on this was really good. It was the flow of the water was really good. I didn't have to squeeze it at all. It was very consistent. Um, again, with the medium, it was really good flow. Uh, didn't have to squeeze it at all. You can get some really fine lines with the medium. Um, I really enjoyed using the both the small and the medium from the Pentel. And then on the large, uh, yeah, again, actually I picked up quite a lot of ink there and that dropped a little more water, I would say, than the small and the medium. Um, all I do is sort of prime it before I start and wipe up a little bit of water and then uh, dip it into the ink. And then the water brush should regulate itself. And this is the flat wash. This brush was interesting. It didn't really give a nice sharp edge that you want to a flat brush. It was kind of almost like a uh, filbert, um, which I didn't really enjoy. The flow was really awesome, but yeah, the straight lines with the end there is a little ragged. So we're moving on here to the Uku. This is the smallest one of the Uku brushes. The flow was really good. It released a little bit of water because I accidentally pressed it. So that's just something to consider when you're using them. You have to be sure not to press it because this one's quite reactive um, and was easy, quite soft, the body of the um, reservoir. So I pressed that. But other than that, it performed really well. We got some really fine lines. This is the medium of the Uku. Again, a little more water flow than the Pentel. Um, it still regulated itself really nicely. We got some really nice fine lines, um, but definitely drops a little more water than the Pentel. And this is the largest version. This one was a little bit dry um, and then it started working. I picked up quite a lot of ink, so we didn't really get to see that wash out there. Um, but yeah, this one was nice. I really enjoyed that one too. And I would say they're very comparable to the Pentel. Maybe just it, they drop a little more water. They still regulate it through that whole wash. Um, there wasn't any patches or anything, uh, but yeah, I'd say the Pentel are a little less juicy. So this is the first flat brush from the Uku, similar to the uh, Pentel here. Consistent wash there, a little patchier I'd say than the Pentel on that one. And then this one was super juicy and dropped a lot of pigment along the way, not so great. But the vertical lines you can see here are nice and crisp on the edge. So that was nice to have a really crisp flat edge. Um, yeah. And then this is the sort of the third size of flat brush. Again, a bit of a ragged edge on there, held a lot of water, did a really nice consistent wash. And we've got some fine lines there if you use it on its side. And then this one's the, the big boy. This held a lot of water. This was great. Um, nice consistent wash. Again, I picked up a lot of ink, so we kind of didn't see that wash out. Gave some really nice lines here. Um, not super crisp on the edges, but still a nice consistent wash throughout. 
And this is just the Secure Koi. This is the one that I use a lot as well as my unnamed one. This one performed really well. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't buy more Sakura Koi ones <laughs> instead of Pentel or Uku. I think I had just watched a video on how good, good the Pentel were, so I was mesmerized by that. So I thought I would just do a little urban sketch to try these brushes out. Um, the reason I bought them was so that I could use them on the go without having to carry water. Uh, and I just wanted to check them out and see how they worked in a real drawing. So I just grabbed a couple of art supplies that were right next to me. Um, this is just an angle brush and I grabbed a Sharpie too and just uh, started to draw them out so that I could test these water brushes. So I'm just using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen brush for this. Uh, I think this is a warm grey 5 or something. Um, I normally do use a Micron, a Pigma Micron uh, 02, but I I broke it. Um, I was doing some heavy duty stippling and just got carried away a little bit and those things are quite delicate and <laughs> so I busted it up. Um, so I've got to go grab some some more microns or um, some other waterproof pens. So this was the only one I had on hand which actually worked quite nicely. Um, the tips on these pens are quite firm so they're not a really flexible brush pen uh, so I was able to get some really fine lines which is great and I quite like it. So here I'm just going in with the fine brush, I believe, from Pentel um, and just grabbing some watercolors and laying down some washes here, trying to be as fast and free as I can. Um, it's kind of weird when you're recording doing art, I feel like you feel the pressure and so I wasn't as loose as I'd want to be. Um, so I just got to try and get in the habit of just forgetting the cameras running and loosen up. So for the paintbrush I used the Pentel brushes uh, in fine and medium and then the Sharpie I used the, the Uku fine brush and then for the shadows I'm using the Uku uh, big boy which was the big floofy one. Um, then I decided that I wanted to do a little bit more drawing so this is I'm drawing the Pentel uh, flat brush here just sketching it in Try not to be too precious about it. I think that's the key I'm um, with urban sketching. I'm really trying to let go. I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist and I never produce anything that's perfect so it's kind of disappointing. So I'm really trying to just let go and draw what I see and be free about it and not to not overwork it too much. So I'm just going back in there with the Pentel fine brush and again with the Uku square brush or a flat brush there, the big one, just to put down the shadow. Okay, so here's my little sad attempt at drawing a watercolour pan. <laughs> it's totally out of proportion. Um, the angle that I'm sitting with the camera above me, it kind of skews my view a little bit, so I really got lost on this one, but you know, it's just a sketch. It's just a little sketch. Just, you know, don't worry about that. It's the essence that we're trying to capture here. You can see the blue paint in there. We're all good. So there was a couple of things um, I just wanted to add about water brushes just in case you haven't used one before but you can also fill these guys with uh, watercolor ink and use use it like that or you could mix up some paint um, like in a little palette or something and then siphon it out into here and then you can actually draw with this guy with the color that's in here which is really convenient for being on the go and stuff if you kind of always like to draw with sepia or you could use a, a black ink. I'm not 100% sure how India ink would go in this um, just because it often has shellac or something in it so it may or even sort of water fasting. Um, and another thing about cleaning, I uh, you can use paper towels when you're on the go it's great just have a paper towel as you can see <laughs> I took this away on vacation with me um, with my Sakura brush and you just clean it off in here and then when it dries you can use it again. Um, you can keep folding it and use it over and over um, till it gets totally covered in color that actually starts to pick up when you're dragging through it. But um, when I'm at home I tend to use one of these, uh, I don't know what they are, like a Scandinavian cleaning cloth. Um, and they do get stained but you, after a session I just rinse this out and wash it and some of the pigment will just wash out but it never transfers, it's kind of just stained on there, it doesn't transfer back onto the pen while I'm painting. And I find that um, that is an easier way and a more kind of environmentally 
conscious way than using a bunch of paper towels. So just food for thought. So I think overall, all these water pens did really well. I was super impressed by this cheap pack from Uku. Um, I think there were some real winners there. I think that all of them performed across the board really well. There was no issues with backflow, which means that when you're um, picking up the ink out of the watercolor palette or uh, out of a pan, it doesn't go all the way through here and into the reservoir of water, which can contaminate for further use. So none of them did that. A lot of cheap water pens do that. They don't have this sort of filter here or this reservoir that um, regulates the flow. So they all performed really well there. Um, I stored them overnight a couple of days and they were full of water and nothing leaked. Uh, their cap stayed tightly on the top. Some of them don't post on the bottom, but that's not really a huge issue. Um, I think another thing would be just sort of preference wise. I liked the feel of these Pentels better. The body is a little softer and easier to push. Some of these big white plastic ones, this plastic is pretty hard. So if you have issues with sort of strength in your hands and stuff, this may not be a great idea. Um, these, these ones here are much more ergonomic and easier to push. Um, yeah, so I think out of all of these, I would probably use these guys, the small and the medium, um, and this flat one here for big washes. This was really cool for doing um, shadows and such. And I think out of the Pentel, I wouldn't bother getting the four pack personally. I didn't think this was much, you know, much chop here, unless you want kind of like a filbert, but I really wanted a flat. Um, you can see here up close here, it really just didn't give a nice flat edge, which I was looking for. I much preferred the one from the Uku brand here, which was the F2, which was this guy here, I believe. So I think that's about it for this little look into um, the Pentel and the Uku water brushes. Um, yeah, again, the Sakura one performed really well too. So don't give up on those guys. If you find a good deal on them, um, I would try those out. Uh, they, I really like this guy. I've been using him for years since I got my watercolor kit. So definitely a, a good performer. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful and maybe it inspires you guys to go out and do some urban sketching just grab even just grab the the cheap uku pack and go out and about and draw some stuff that you see and try and have fun um okay well i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye